Are you just getting started out in Scratch 3 and wondering about the Scratch Online Editor? Well stick around because in this tutorial of Scratch Basics we're going to explore the interface together. Coming up! Hello world, Surfing Scratcher here, teacher, learner, programmer and lover of learning, bringing you the goodness of learning through games. On this channel, we code Scratch projects together through video tutorials, so if you're new here, consider subscribing. At any point during the video, check out the show notes and links in the description below. I list out a bunch of resources and unplugged activities that you can use to help you along your learning journey. Alright, let's get stuck into it. Alright, so you've hit that create button and you've been directed to this page, the Scratch Project Editor. We're going to explore this area first. This area here is called the stage. The stage is just another term used for a background in Scratch. It can house sprites, it can house scripts, and its costumes can be changed or backgrounds. There are three sizes to the stage in Scratch. This is the regular view, and it is 480 pixels wide. So this is the X axis, and it is 360 pixels up and down on the Y axis. In the small view, this is 240 pixels wide on the x-axis and 180 pixels high on the y-axis. You can also go into full screen mode and this, the size of this is determined by the user's screen. So if you're not sure what a pixel is, it's just a point of light on the screen. Let's now talk about how sprites move around on the stage. To do that, I'm going to switch into a new backdrop. So you can see a lot of stuff has changed. If I go down and click my cat sprite down here, there are a few things that I can do. Firstly, I can change its name. Then if I work my way across, I've got this like these arrows and an X here with a number zero. And I've got this like arrow going up and down with a Y and a zero here. So this allows me to move the cat around the stage. Now in Scratch, the center of the stage is actually 0, 0. So if I move the cat away from the center, I put that in here. So that is 0x and 0y. If I, if I put them back to 0, we'll go back to the center. So there's my center of my cat. Now watch what happens when I move my cat into this blue area. Uh, I've got this indicated by my x's plus and my y's plus. So watch the values here. Cool, so I've got a positive x value and a positive y value. Watch what happens when I move it into the red part. Yep, I've got a negative X and a negative Y as illustrated by here. Watch what happens when I move it into the first gray area. So I've got a negative X and I've got a positive Y. So any value above this horizontal line is gonna be a positive Y value and anything below it will be a negative Y. Anything to the left of this vertical line is gonna be a negative X and anything to the right of it is going to be a positive X. So that is a quick explanation of the X and Y. Okay, so let's talk about the direction now. I'm just going to click down here it's going to bring up this little pop-up and you'll see that this arrow points to the same direction that our cat is looking in. So direction is referring to the direction our sprite is looking. So if I move this you'll see that my direction values change and it changes the direction of where the cat is looking. So if I point all the way down you can see it's pointing at 180 and that's that's represented by all these positive values in the blue. If I go on the east side of this then all of it is blue. If I go to the west side of it, then all of the values are negative, and that's represented by this red half of the circle. We can also talk about the mirroring of this sprite here. So if I move my direction around to the other side, it just flips it on the y-axis there. So that is another neat thing that you can do. Okay, the last aspect of here that I want to talk about is the size of your sprite. So currently, the default size is 100%. That's represented by this value. Now I want to show you what happens when I change that value to something that is bigger. I'm going to make this sprite grow to 150. I'll move that into that box just there, just so you can see it. So 150 means it is uh, one and a half times bigger than our original. And then if I shrink that to 50%, that is now half the size of the original. Size is a really neat attribute of a sprite. Okay, so now let's jump across all the way over here to these three tabs. So we've got the code tab, which we'll come back to. We've also got a costume tab here, which is the graphics of our cat here. So if I was to go in, change one of these colors with the, the paint tool here, there we go, perfect. I can change the color of my cat's head to purple. And you'll see that's already updated here on the stage. We can also create multiple costumes and we can create some pretty simple animations if we just click back and forth to them. But I'll create a new video in the future on costumes. I've also got the sounds tab. Here you can go and select some sounds or record your own. And we've also got the coding uh, 
tab here. And in this area, this is where we're gonna put all of our code or blocks for our particular sprite. So every sprite that's down here has these three options available to it, code, costumes, and sounds. Okay, cool. So up the top here, you've got a link to the Scratch homepage. You've got the ability to change the language. We'll keep it in English. You can also download, download this to a computer uh, and save it on the, on the cloud. So you can click on the edit tab here and you can either restore your project to its last save or turn on turbo mode, which tells me that turbo mode runs the project extremely fast, having minimal to no wait time between blocks. This is useful for 3D engines or large mathematical operations. You can also click on the tutorials and that'll take you to a whole bunch of tutorials that you can go around and play with. I'm gonna jump back now. You can change the name of your project up here and you can also get to share it, make it public so everyone can see your crafty work. Okay, so that's a general overview. Now let's talk a little bit about these two buttons up here. So every Scratch project starts with the press of the green flag. So I'm gonna press that flag now and look, nothing happens. So underpinning that is we need to respond to this action. So what we can do is we can jump across into our events. I'm gonna go ahead and grab the when the green flag is clicked Scratch block. Now Scratch blocks are a little bit like puzzle pieces in that you can stick puzzle pieces together, but some pieces belong around the edge. Now this is one of those edge pieces in that at the top here, nothing can connect to this, this top block here, but we've got this little extended bit and you can definitely connect other code blocks to it. So I'm gonna go ahead and press the green flag and nothing happens. But if I get a motion block and I connect this, this move 10 steps block. I'm just gonna drag it near it and watch like it, it comes up with this little highlight. I'm gonna like go and boom, it snaps together and I like the feeling of that. So as soon as I press the green flag, it's gonna move my cat across the stage, which is pretty neat. I'm gonna go get uh, another block here. This is our turn 15 degrees. So this is talking about our direction. It's gonna add direction every single time. All right, let's get one more block and let's go to a random position now. So I'm gonna press the green flag and our cat just jumps around the screen and goes to a random position. So that's pretty neat. Down here we've also got the backpack. Now the backpack's pretty cool because what it does is it stores code from other people's projects or your other projects that you can share around. So it's kind of like, yeah, wearing a backpack of code on your back. Lastly, I wanna talk about the Scratch Wiki, which is kind of like a dictionary for Scratch. So the Scratch Wiki is really cool in that if you know what you're looking for, it will give you like a really quick explanation of what you're looking for. So for instance, we were talking about the stage a lot. So if I click here on the stage, it's gonna take me to a uh, Scratch Wiki page on the stage that you can have a little look-see through. So it's a very useful resource um, to uncover some of the hidden stuff that is in Scratch. All right, it's time for a Scratchy question. I'm interested to know what made you start your Scratch learning journey. Drop an answer in the comments below. Thanks for checking out this tutorial. Subscribe, ring the bell if you're new here, and be sure to check out my other content, which should be on the screen right now. If you can't get enough, then head on over to my Patreon page where you can join membership tier for access to exclusive content. But until then, I'm off to go find a wave. I'll catch you in the next one.